We all know that material will expand or contrast when experiencing temperature change. So the change in length of the member caused by temperature change, delta T, is calculated by this equation. In this case, the capital delta T is the temperature change in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. L is the original length of the member, and alpha here is the linear coefficient of thermal stress. It is just like Young's modulus, an inherent material property, and it is in the unit of the reciprocal of degree C or Fahrenheit. Let's look at this example. There are two rods AC and BD that are made of the same material and are of the same original dimension. Their length, cross-sectional area, Young's modulus, and the linear coefficient of thermal stress alpha are all given. They are connected to a rigid body. CD, which is subjected to an applied force of 1 kilopounds. And also for the entire system, the temperature has increased by 80 degree Fahrenheit. And we know that both the temperature change and the force developed in the rods will cause the rods to deform. And we need to determine the angle of tilt of this rigid member after equilibrium. So from what we've learned in statics, we draw the free body diagram of the rigid member CD showing the two unknown forces, FAC and FBD. We can write our two equilibrium equations, the resultant force along the y direction equals to zero, and the resultant moment about point D equals to zero. In this case, because there is no horizontal force, therefore we cannot write a third equation that the resultant force along the x direction equals to zero. However, we only have two unknowns. so two equations, two unknowns, we are able to solve for FAC and FBD. Now we need to determine the deformation of rod AC and BD. Remember I mentioned that there are two factors. First, deformation caused by the force, and second, the deformation caused by temperature change. So let's first look at the deformation caused by force which is calculated, as we already know, by the displacement equation. The displacement equals to the force times the length over cross-sectional area and Young's modulus. Keep in mind, though, in the displacement equation, the force must be internal normal force. However, in this case, the internal force in each rod does equal to the external force F. So we know the values for all of these parameters. We can substitute them in and calculate the deformation in each rod caused by force. Then the second contribution to the deformation, which is the change in the length of the rods caused by temperature change. And that is calculated by this equation. And we know the linear coefficient of thermal stress alpha and the length and the temperature change delta T is 80 degree Fahrenheit. So substitute in all these values, we can calculate the deformation of these two rods caused by the temperature change. Therefore, for each rod, the total deformation is simply the sum of the two contributions from the force and from the temperature change. And with this information, we can find out the angle of tilt theta from this geometry to be, in this case, 6 times 10 to the negative fifth power radian. And of course, if you want to, you can convert this into degree. And that answers this question. Let's look at this example. We have a uniform solid shaft, its cross-sectional area, Young's modulus, and the linear coefficient of thermal stress alpha are all given. It is initially snugly fitted between the two walls at a temperature T equals to 20 degrees C, which means that when T equals to 20 degrees C, there's no support reaction at point A or B. However, then the temperature changes and becomes a function of position Tx equals to 10x plus 40 degrees C. And we need to determine the support reactions at A and B when this happens. So we start with drawing the free body diagram of this member, showing the two support reaction forces, Fa and Fb. These two are our unknowns. And we write our equilibrium equation, resultant force along the x direction equals to zero. However, this is the only equilibrium equation we can write for this free body diagram. And it is not enough to solve our two unknowns. Therefore, this is a statically indeterminate member. 
but we do have a compatibility condition that the total displacement delta b relative to a is zero. You can also write delta a relative to b equals to zero. It is the same thing. It will give you the same result. Now, don't forget the displacement has two contributions, one from the force, the other one from the temperature change. So let's determine the displacement caused by the force first. To do that, we need to again determine the internal normal force, and we section this member anywhere between point A and B, take the left-hand side, draw the internal normal force NAB, write equilibrium equation, and get NAB equals to negative FA. Therefore, the displacement caused by the force equals to the internal normal force times the length over cross-sectional area and Young's modulus. So in this case, this equals to negative FA times L over AE. Now let's work on the displacement caused by the temperature change. For that, we need to know the temperature change, which is the final temperature Tx minus the initial temperature 20 degrees C, which is 10x plus 20, which is still a function of position. Therefore, for a differential element with a length of dx, because of this temperature change, it has deformed by d delta t. And d delta t equals to, by this equation, alpha, the linear coefficient of thermal stress, times delta t, which is a function of location, and then times dx. Therefore, the total displacement caused by the temperature change is the integration of this term. So if we do the integration, and we get it equals to 3.825 times 10 to the negative third power meter. Therefore, remember our compatibility condition is that the displacement caused by the force plus the displacement caused by the temperature change equals to zero. So the displacement caused by the force is negative FA times L over AE plus the displacement caused by the temperature change. Substitute in the length, cross-sectional area, and Young's modulus. So in this equation, the only unknown is FA, and this equals to zero. Therefore, we can solve from this equation that FA equals to 115 kilonewton. Substitute in the equilibrium equation that FA plus FB equals to zero, so we can solve for FB to be negative 115 kilonewton. And that's the answer to this problem. And the negative sign in FB indicates that the direction of the force FB is in the opposite direction as what I draw. Therefore, it should look like this.